Hi, boys and girls. It's Mrs. Falovic and Frankie. And we've been learning about habitats. Today, we're going to learn about our third habitat, the ocean. A habitat is a place where animals and plants live together. Say the word habitat with me. Habitat. Remember, animals find all the things they need to survive right in their habitat. They find food, water, and shelter in their habitat. These are an animal's basic needs. Plants find all the things they need to survive in their habitat too. They find nutrients, air, water, and light in their habitats. These are a plant's basic needs. This is a picture of an ocean habitat. The ocean is also sometimes called the sea. The place where the ocean meets the sand is called the beach. Lots of animals live in the salty water of the ocean, and many plants live there too. The ocean habitat has lots of salty water, and the water is very deep. Pond habitats have water too, but the water is shallow and it is not salty. We call the kind of water in a pond fresh water. Ponds and oceans both have water, but they are very different habitats. Listen to find out what types of plants and animals live on the beach and in the ocean. Look and listen carefully to see if you can remember some of the animals and plants shown in the pictures, because when we're finished reading the story, I'm going to have you make a list of all of the plants and animals you can remember from the ocean habitat. Look all around. Do you see the wide expanse of clear blue water? Can you hear waves crashing onto sand? Can you see the thin blades of the beach grasses blowing in the breeze? You can see the ocean habitat, but you can't see me. I'm hiding in the water, but I would love to swim up onto the beach and meet you. Boys and girls, what animal do you think it might be? Remember, it's going to be an animal that can swim in the water and come up onto the beach. Greetings, my name is Samson Seal and I live at the beach. The beach is a sandy or rocky place where the salty water of the ocean meets the land of the coast. I think I'll move along the beach and see what I can find. What sorts of plants and animals do you see at the beach, boys and girls? Birds, grasses. I also see some rocks, sand, and water. I see many different birds wading in the surf, searching for things to eat. I love to collect shells when I walk along the beach. Did you know that an animal used to live inside each shell? In this picture, I see two sandpipers, a sea star, which some people call a starfish, but it's not really a fish, so we call it a sea star, a piping plover, which is this bird here with the black ring around its neck, a sand dollar, a vampire shell, scallop shells, and a ghost crab. In the surf, I can see a shorebird using its long beak to dig down into the sand and find food. As the waves roll in and the water gets deeper, its long legs keep its body out of the water so its feathers stay dry. Boys and girls, waves are water that moves. It curls up and crashes onto the beach. It's fun to see the crabs scuttling all over the sand at the beach. That tiny hole is the ghost crab's burrow. I think that the ghost crab sees me and is going to hide down in its hole. Wow, the sun is really hot at the beach. I think I'll go for a swim out deep in the ocean so I can cool off. Boys and girls, have any of you ever taken a trip to the beach? Did you see any crabs? Did you go swimming in the ocean? 
Was the water salty? Deep underwater, there are all kinds of animals living in the ocean. There are enormous whales and squid and beautiful sea turtles. I have to swim carefully underwater to avoid the stinging tentacles of the jellyfish. Boys and girls, all of these different animals live in the deep water of the ocean where it's dark because the sunlight doesn't reach. Here is a whale, a dolphin, a sea turtle, a squid, shark, jellyfish, octopus. Dolphins are animals that live under the water too. They can't breathe underwater like fish do. Since they are mammals, they have to come to the surface to breathe air. Even deeper, near the bottom of the ocean, I see a shark using its fins to swim through the salty water. Its gills are moving back and forth, taking in oxygen from the water. It will probably use those big teeth to catch some fish to eat for dinner. Remember, boys and girls, that humans have lungs and we breathe air. Sharks are fish, so they use their gills to take in oxygen underwater. They don't have to go to the surface of the ocean to breathe air. Right here in the picture, see where I'm pointing? That's where those gil their gills are. Those slits are their gills, and that's what they use to take in the oxygen from the water. Phew! I'm getting tired of swimming and need to go back to the surface so I can take a deep breath of air. I'm going to follow this sea turtle as it swims up to the beach. I wonder what it's going to do when it gets up there. The sea turtle has come up to the beach to lay its eggs in a hole in the sand where they can stay safe and warm. In a few months, the eggs will hatch and the little turtles will crawl out, making their way into the ocean. So boys and girls, in this picture here, we can see the hole that this turtle buried its eggs in. And here are all the baby sea turtles traveling back to the water. Farther down the shore, there are rocks that make a little tidal pool of ocean water. I'm going to see if I can find any animals or plants living in the rocky tidal pool. Boys and girls, a tidal pool is a shallow puddle of ocean water that's trapped between the rocks near the ocean. In the tidal pool, I see lots of small animals. On the edge of the rocks, there are some mussels growing in a group. They have shiny black shells that protect their fleshy insides. Besides the mussels, a sea urchin is attached to a rock on the bottom of the pool. Its spines protect it from crabs and fish nearby. In the picture, here are the mussels. This is a sea urchin, a green crab, a sculpin fish, periwinkles here and here, which are sea snails, a sea anemone, and a sea star. Sea anemones are animals that often attach themselves to rocks in a tidal pool. They use their short tentacles to sting and catch animals that swim by. The hole in the middle is the anemone's mouth that it uses to eat the prey it has caught. So if we look at the picture, these are the tentacles and this is the mouth. I almost didn't see the sculpin fish hiding inside the coral. Its big eyes are looking all around to see if it's safe to come out and swim around the tidal pool in search of food. Boys and girls, remember we learned the word camouflage? Can you say that with me? Camouflage. Camouflage means a way for animals to blend in and stay hidden by using the color of their bodies to match the color of the things around them. And this sculpin fish is camouflaged because it's the same color as the rocks where it's hiding. I love living in the ocean habitat because I can go for a swim whenever I want and I can lay on the beach and enjoy the sunlight as it warms my skin. 
I think I'm going to find a sunny rock where I can listen to the seagulls and take my afternoon nap. Boys and girls, in the story we just read, we talked about seashells. And right here in this picture is a scallop that lives inside a shell. So right here is the scallop. That's the soft inside. And here is the shell, which is hard and on the outside. And it protects the soft inside, kind of like a turtle. A turtle has a soft inside, but then a hard shell to protect itself. This animal grew this shell to protect itself. And then when the animal, the scallop is gone, the shell is left and the ocean waves carry the shell onto the sand. So all the seashells that you see on the beach used to protect the soft insides of an animal. Boys and girls, at this point, I would like you to make a list of all of the plants and animals that you can remember from the story that live in the ocean habitat. When you say the names of the plants and animals, have an adult write the words on a list so you can see what the words look like. You can write all of the plants in a green pen or crayon, and you can write all of the animals in a red pen or crayon. Have fun making your list.